This video is going to show you um, how to process an HTML form with PHP. And this uh, method I'm going to show today is using one page. So it's a form page that processes itself. Now, I think the easiest way to approach this is to review how two, processing two pages work. Um, I have a complete different video on this. I'll put the link in the um, description if you'd like to refer to that, because I'm just going to go through this really quickly and describe how the overall process works. Now, with processing a form, we have generally your form, and if we do it across two pages, we have a separate HTML page which contains our form. And there's a few important parts to this. The action of the form tag is the page that you want to process the form. So in this case, when we hit submit, it will then go to processform.php. Now the name of this just needs to match the page you're going to. It does not need to be called process form. The method is how you're sending the information. And in today's video, we're focusing on the post method versus get. And the other important thing with the form is that each form tag needs to have a name associated with it. So they need to be unique. That's how we will be accessing it in PHP. So when we push submit on the form, it will then trigger the action and navigate to the page listed in the forms action tag. And in this example, it was going to process form.php. And then of course we're processing it. So like I said, I have a different video that goes over the details, but in this case, I've got a variable to hold the value. And in the request in that uh, square brackets, that is the name of the um, text field I'm pulling the value from. So that needs to match the name of the field on the form. Now, if I want to switch this to one page, it's essentially the same process, but it's all contained in one file. So before we had two different um, pages, we had our form HTML, which contained the form um, tags and HTML, of course, and then we had a separate page processing it. So what we're going to do is put that all into one page. So now I'm calling this one page form.php and it's combined and I'll be having the PHP section of the code above the regular form section of HTML. Now, when we're combining this, we do have an issue where if we run this page right away, it's going to go here, it'll go to PHP and immediately it's saying, hey, first name is going to equal, I'm pulling the the value from the field F name. Now, since this is the very first time in, it's going to give us an error because there isn't any information there yet. So to get around that, we can put an if statement around the PHP section. So this will only happen once the form has been submitted. So when we hit submit, it will then navigate back to the page and if that's the case, it will run the inside of that PHP. If it's not sent there by a submit button or posting to the page, it will not run this. The other important thing is to make sure that the action is pointing to the name of itself. So action equals one page form.php. I called it that because that is the name of the page that I am writing. Then what's going to happen is when somebody clicks submit, it will then navigate to the page listed on the forms action tag, which is itself, and then it'll process the PHP. And this time around, since it is being sent a post request method, it will then process. So I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of that in action. Okay, so here I am in brackets. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I have my um, Apache web server running um, so I can do some live previewing. I have opened the folder I'm working in and this particular folder is going to be located in my htdocs and I made a folder for, for it. I just called it form demo. And then I also have my project settings set up so that it's going to lodge my um, local host with the path that 
of the folder that we're in right now. So all of those things were covered in a, a previous video if you want details on that, but I just wanted to remind you of those things. Now, instead of you watching me type, I'm just gonna go ahead and start here with my form that I used before. Um, so right now I have my form and um, it looks basically the same as before. This is in an HTML um, document. And what I want to do is put my PHP into it. Now, once again, instead of watching me type, um, I'm just gonna jump over to that example I had from last time, which I called um, Simple Display. And I'm gonna grab that entire PHP um, tag section. And I'll go through that in a minute if you didn't do that, um, that other process. Now, in the future, you could certainly just go right to the single page um, form processing. I'm just doing this so that you don't have to, like I said, watch me type it all, but I'll go through it. So I've got my form and I'm gonna be putting that inside my body. And then I'm also going to now save this as a PHP document. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say file, save as. I'm just gonna keep it in that same folder. I'm gonna call it, um, I'll call it one page form. And I need to make sure that it has a PHP extension or it won't process. So now that I have that there, pretty much what we've got is our PHP section, which is this, and our form section. So back to um, the example I was talking about, let's say I didn't add that if statement around my PHP um, and uh, let's just run it and see what happens. Notice it's giving me errors. You forgot to enter your first name and you forgot to enter your last name. And then it gives me the form and submit. Now we don't want feedback like that yet because um, somebody didn't even try to submit this form yet. So let's go back and add that if statement around our PHP section. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is inside PHP, I am going to say if server request method equals post. So that means, is it sent there by a form? I'm gonna do open curly brace, and I'm gonna do the closing curly brace all the way at the end of this PHP tag. And I'm gonna go ahead and indent things so we can see it easier. So inside all of this if section and that before that ending curly brace, I'm highlighting and I can just tab that in to make it easier to read. Uh, I would recommend making sure to indent well. It just makes things a lot easier. So at this point, it is only going to run this PHP section if I got there through submitting this page. Now let's go through the code here quick. Um, it, like I said, if you weren't familiar with the processing uh, portion, I'd suggest looking at my other video and then that kind of talks about the guts of this more. But in this case, I have two fields in the form. I have a first name and I'm storing that, or it's in a, a text field called F name and L name. So I want to retrieve that by using this request command. You may also see one that says post, that would work just the same in this case. So I have an if statement here for each field to check to see if that field is not empty. So that exclamation point means not empty the field F name. So is the first name not empty? If it's not empty, as in it has something, it's going to take what's in it and put it into the variable first name. Otherwise, I'm setting the variable first name to an empty string just to have something in there and I said, you forgot to enter your first name. And I did the same thing for the last name. So I'm checking to see if last name is not empty. If it's not empty, I'm going to be setting it to a variable. Otherwise, I'm setting the variable to an empty string and giving an error. And then at the end here, I did put it in an if statement just to hide it unless everything was entered. So I'm checking to see if last name is not equal to an empty string and first name is not equal to an empty string. So if they are both have something, it will then say, thank you, first name, last name, which would be whatever they entered for filling out the form. 
And this will only run if I run the form and hit submit, because then it will return a request method of type post. So let me save this and try it out. Okay, so notice we're not getting an error. However, if I hit submit and don't enter anything, it does say you forgot to enter your first name and you forgot to enter your last name. And you know what? I actually have an error here. Notice that I don't even see my form and it is going to a page called simple display. I forgot to change my form action. So I need this to go to one page form and not simple display. That was something I used last week. So let's close this up and I want this to go to itself to process itself. So the action needs to be one page form.php. And when copying and pasting, I find that um, personally, I find that to be an error that I make frequently. Um, I have students who um, make that error frequently. So it's actually pretty good that I, I forgot to change that this time around. So I'm going to save it and let's try it again. So once again, we've got our form. If I hit submit, now it just says you forgot to enter your first name, you forgot to enter your last name, and it pushes that form down. So we are still on one page form.php. So that's great. So let's enter something. So how about um, John? How about John Jones? That's fine. And I hit submit. Now it says, thank you, John Jones, for filling out the form. Now in a later video, I will be showing how to get rid of this. And also, I want to show in a next video, um, what if I have um, first name, John Jones, right? And I, or nothing, and then Jones, and I hit submit, and it says you forgot to enter your la first name, but now it cleared everything out. So I'm going to show my next video on how to keep values in fields even when the, the page is refreshed.